So in James chapter 4, the part of the passage I'm going to focus on this morning uh, for the first point that I have to make in a sermon is, is starting there in verse number 13 where the Bible says, Go to now ye that say today or tomorrow we will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain, whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. And we're getting into the, a little bit more into this, but I want to focus just on that first phrase there where it's talking about, you know, making all these plans for the future and everything else. We're going to do this, we're going to do that tomorrow, and, and we're going to do your know, buy, sell, we're going to get game, we're going to do all these great things and kind of living in the future when he's saying you don't even know what's going to happen tomorrow. Now, this isn't against making goals in general, but this is talking about, you know, this is, is making a very good point that we don't know what a day is going to bring. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. We need to make sure we're doing things now. The Bible illustrates to us here, what is your life? It is even a vapor. What is a vapor? You see a little bit of you know, you're cooking some, boiling some water. You can see some water vapor coming up and it just dissipates. It disappears real fast. You get to see it for an instant and then it's gone. And the Bible is illustrating that's what our life is like. You know, whether you live 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50, 70, 100. Overall, it's still really not that much time. Even if you live a full life, a full age, that, that would be considered really old, like 100 years old, that's still only a, a very short time. Now, our time is a very precious commodity. And the older you get, the more you realize that. All the people who have, have been around longer and longer, time seems to get shorter and shorter and shorter and things happen faster and faster. And I already see heads nodding up and down because it's a truth. It is something that is very true. It's a fact. And what I would love to do, and I think what everybody that starts getting to the point of, of realization just through, just naturally coming to this realization, what you'd like to be able to do is impress this upon people who are younger. To take your time seriously and really understand. And even if you can't quite understand it and you feel like you have all the time in the world to do things, take some wisdom from people who are older than you. Because this is a truth, whether you feel it or not, whether you understand it or not, time flies by really fast. And the choices that you make on how you choose to use your time are, good, are very important. You don't want to end up at the end of your life. You think, oh, that's just so far away. Well, you know what? It could be tomorrow, first of all. And that's what the Bible's saying right here. You, you don't, don't make these plans. Well, I'm going to live for God you know, especially when you're younger, I'm going to live for God when I'm an adult, when I'm older, when I'm in my 20s or in my 30s, and then, then I'll choose to live for God. Well, you know what? You don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. What if you were to die tomorrow? Are you going to be able to look at the things that you've done and say, I didn't waste my life? I didn't waste my time. I didn't waste opportunities. I didn't, you know, I, I, was, I was still working out. If, you're, if you happen to, God forbid, you're younger and you happen to die, right? Obviously, you're not going to have all of the opportunities that people who live long are going to have, but what did you do with your opportunity? What did you do with your time? This is what we need to be able to ask ourselves and, and keep in mind and keep conscious of and don't just think that you're going to have all of the time to do all of these great things. You might not, which is why you need to focus on getting them done now and using your time wisely. The challenge that we're going to have for this month, I'm going to get into more details later, but the whole point is going to be to redeem your time. Use your time, the time that you have. I want everyone to be able to focus on what you do on a regular basis and start thinking about it in the terms of just the grand scheme of things. Am I not doing as much as I could just because I'm wasting time? I'm inefficient with my time. I'm doing things that are sinful or I'm just doing things that are just a total waste and provide no value whatsoever. 
I think back just on my own life, on things that weren't necessarily inherently sinful in and of themselves, but how many times have I stayed up all night and all day playing video games? And again, I'm not saying playing a video game. See, you knew this was going to come up, Brother Lindsay. I was over there at his house yesterday. We played Super Mario Brothers. But, um, so, of course, this has to come up in a sermon. He's like, we're going to preach against it. <laughs> I'm not saying that playing a video game is sinful or wicked or wrong. You play a video game. That's, that's not the point. That's not what I'm saying. But you know what was wrong is when I spent just days on end just sitting in front of a TV and just pushing some buttons and okay, yeah, you made it to the end of the level, but what, what, what does that do for you at all? It's mindless, ultimately it's mindless entertainment. It's not something you really take with you. All you're stuck with is that stupid Mario song in your head <laughs> for the rest of your life that you know every single note of, of, of that song because you've heard it over and over and over and over again, but it doesn't really give you any skills. It doesn't, it doesn't provide you with extra knowledge other than, you know, up, down, up, down, left, right, left, right, A, B, A, B, you know, that, that, that's not going to help you in any area of your life at all. So um, we'll get into this a little bit more specifics in a little bit, but I just want to impress this on everyone. Again, get what I'm saying here, because I'm not just saying every form of entertainment or every form of thing that you do is, is wicked or wrong or sinful, and you just can't ever do anything to have a little bit of fun. That's not what I'm saying. What I am saying though is to be very careful with your time and, and you need to decide how much of those types of things do you really want to do with your life? How much do you want that to, to eat up your schedule? This passage in James 4, I don't think this is talking about making goals, excuse me, or making plans in a general sense. This is just saying, hey, you need to get things done down. And this becomes evident. Let's keep reading here in verse 14 again. Excuse me. Whereas you know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that peereth for a little time and then vanisheth away. For that ye ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. So you can still speak in the future tense, but it's still more saying, well, if God will, if God wants it, you know, if God wills me to be around this longer then we can do these things. It says in verse 16, and this is kind of where he's getting more to the, to the heart of the problem. It's not about just talking about future events, but in verse 16, he says, but now ye rejoice in your boastings. What's boastings? They're bragging, right? They're talking about things in the future that they're going to do as if they'd already done them. You didn't do them. Don't talk about how great, don't, don't talk about how great your church is going to be and how many people are going to win to Christ as a pastor, and you're not even a pastor yet, right? right? You're not even married yet. <laughs> don't, 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 you know, go off and start bragging about all these great things you're going to do. Hey, hey, if God will, great, one day you could, you can pastor a church, you can live for God, you do all these great things, right? If the Lord will, and this is even talking about, this is even talking about spiritual things. I mean, what he's bringing up here, we're going to buy and sell and get gain and we're going to make all this money. He says, now you rejoice in your boastings. All such rejoicing is evil. Don't be bragging about things you haven't even done yet. Verse 17, therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. And again, going back to things that you could do in the future. Things, well, I'm going to do good later. Well, when you know to do good now, but you're just putting that off and you're just going to put that on the back burner and say, well, instead, I'm going to use my time to just do this. And I know I should be doing good, but I'm just going to go and do something else. And then later on in the future, I'm going to do that. Later on, I'm going to live for God. Later on, I'll spend the time and I'll really get serious about reading the Bible. But now I'm young and I just want to have fun. Well, the Bible says that's sin. Because if you know to do good and you don't do it, that's a sin. Don't assume you have all the time in the world. Um, and besides all that, if you have that type of a mindset, what makes you think that if you start to live foolishly, that you're ever going to stop? Then once you go down that path, you know, maybe you're more spiritual now, but you say, you know what, I'm just going to have fun. 
I'll get into this church stuff later. I'm going to take a break. I'm going to go off to college and I'm going to do all this other stuff. And then I'll come back to living a godly life. Then I'll come back to getting serious. Maybe when I get a family and have kids and get a little bit settled down, then I'll come back to church. Well, maybe you won't. And if you have a mindset like that already to start with, where you're willing to just say, well, I'm going to put God back here and I'm going to go off and do what I want to do. You know what the odds are is that you're going to continue just to do what you want to do. At least until God brings some chastening and makes you realize that you don't just put God in the, in the, on the back shelf and just put him away for another time to, to do that. If you know to do good and you don't do it, it's a sin, according to Scripture. Turn, if you would, to Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. Our time is important. We see this concept more than once in Scripture. In James 4, we see, hey, what's your life? It's a vapor. You're here today, gone tomorrow. You don't have a lot of time. And... The reason why our time is so important is because the things that we do here really matter. You will exist for eternity. You're going to be around forever. And especially being a child of God, hey, you're going to be in God's kingdom. You're going to be with the Lord. You're going to, you know, it's going to be great just being with God forever. No doubt. But this life really matters. And, and once you're done with this life, you know, all you have left is then you're going to face the judgment seat of Christ where you're either going to receive rewards or receive nothing right. based on what you did with your time on this earth. And if you use your time doing nothing, you're going to get nothing. What you put in, you're going to get, you can get nothing back. And, and you know what? That lasts forever. That, that, there's no do-overs. There's no going back. God's not going to reincarnate you, right? And give you another chance at this life because, well, you wasted your time the first time and then you died. So I'm going to send you back and then you get to go do the whole thing over again. That doesn't, that doesn't work. That's not the way God operates. You have one chance in this life to make good choices, to do the right thing. And you don't know how much time you have. You don't know what God's plan is for you. And honestly, if you start making all, like a lot of wrong choices, you can cause your life to end before God intended your life to end because you didn't choose to do what he wanted you to do. Right. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 5, verse number 6. The Bible says, Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. So this is talking about not being deceived by vain words. God's wrath comes upon people who choose to live in the flesh, who choose to, to do things after the lust of the flesh. God's wrath is on those people. That's because earlier in the chapter, let me just turn there real quick myself, it's talking about people who... Uh, you know, it gives a whole list of people who don't inherit the, the kingdom of God. And um, let's just start reading in verse number one. The Bible reads, Be therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling sa savor. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as become as saints, Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For this ye know, that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. And we see similar passages to this one in other places in the Bible, in 1 Corinthians, and in other places where we're, he's saying, hey, no adulterers, no whoremongers, no, you know, and, and it lists off a bunch of sins um, are going to be in the kingdom of, of heaven. And people will use these verses to try to justify a works-based salvation, seeing, see, you have to, if you have any of these sins in your life, you can't be... No, because the Bible says, but ye are washed, but ye are justified. In other places, you know, explaining that while you may have committed these sins because you're in Christ, 
all of those sins are washed away. So you're no, God doesn't look at you as that adulterer when you're entering into heaven because he looks and sees what Jesus did for you, not all of your sins. But the point that's being made here is that, hey, there are people going to hell for all these reasons. And you would have too if you didn't receive forgiveness through Jesus Christ. But the wrath of God is going to be poured out on people because they committed all these things and they didn't have Christ. So don't be partakers with them. With these, if God's wrath is on these people for all these things, then you ought not to be involved with all of these things. You should be keeping yourself from this stuff. Foolish talking, jesting. It says, you know, whoremongers, unclean, covetous, idolaters. You go through all of these different sins. And then it says in verse number six, let no man deceive you with vain words for because of these things come at the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Why? Because all these people doing these things are disobedient. They're, they're, they're disobeying God's laws. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. Don't, don't be doing the same things. Verse number eight, for ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. So instead of communing with, having fellowship with, all, you know, putting, inserting yourself and being around this whole situation where people are committing all these types of sins and just, and just being right there along with them and, and going off and getting into sin like that, He's saying, don't have fellowship with that, but rather reprove them. You take the opposite stance and say, no, that's wrong. No, I'm not going to do that. No, I'm not going to be involved with those things. For it is a shame, verse number 12, to even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things are that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore he saith, awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. And this is going back to the original point of the sermon. Redeem your time wisely. Don't be like a fool. Now, this is referring to sin. If you are using your time to do sinful things, you're like a fool. Okay, you're acting just like a fool and the Bible is saying, hey, wake up, awake thou that sleepest, walk in the light. Don't have any business walking in the darkness and, and fellowshipping with all the, you know, with these people who God's going to pour out his wrath on because they're unsaved, because they're just living in the flesh. They can't even walk in the spirit. You have the spirit of God. God has given you light. Walk in that light. Reprove the wicked works of darkness and do what's right. Walk circumspectly. Pay attention to what you're doing. How are you spending your time? Now, there's many ways we can choose to spend our time, right? God's given you, you know, time is time. It's going to keep on going and it doesn't stop for anybody. We all have the same amount of time in this room. We're going to, and, and one of the reasons why we're doing this specific challenge is because we're going to continue to be doing challenges every month. I actually made a list of all the ideas that I've had for challenges, and I've got nine of them total. And it doesn't mean I won't come up with three more to just fill out the year. Or it doesn't mean we might not repeat one anyways, just because why not? It's a good idea. Let's keep challenging. And, and hopefully you guys like this. I like it. I like pushing myself to do more. I don't want to get comfortable. I don't want to take a vacation. I want to keep doing more and, and, and continuing to focus on these different things. And this challenge in particular, this is, this is one of the ones where I'm actually not going to give a prize out for this one. The prize is your time. So whatever you're able to do, and this is going to be kind of subject, you're all going to have to apply this personally to yourself. So I can't really come up with specific rules on this challenge. But I do want everybody thinking about this definitely throughout this month. But obviously, it's, this is something that's going to benefit you. You get value throughout the rest of your life. And what we're going to do with this challenge is we're going to focus on eliminating a time waster. Something that wastes your time. And 
it doesn't have to be something sinful. But if you do have something that's sinful that wastes your time, get rid of that first. I'm not as worried about the things that aren't inherently sinful that waste your time as much as I am about, you know, the sinful things. Because God's going to care a lot more about getting right with him on things that are, that are actually spoken against, like we saw here in Ephesians chapter 5. Hey, don't, you know, don't participate in these wicked works that, you know, if you're spending your time doing anything that the Bible's saying this is a sin, take care of that first, okay? And I'm not going to go into all of the different ways. And look at your own life and figure out if there's, some, you know, you, you, right now, if there is something in your life, you're, it's already in your head, I'm sure. You're probably already thinking like, yep, this is what. Now, look, we all have sin. And we all struggle against sin. And we're all going to have our own areas. But they're not all necessarily great time wasters either. Okay, so try to get what, I, what I'm asking of you for this, for this challenge. We call them the, the small sins, right? Little things that, that we all struggle with. It's great, you know, we should always be working on getting rid of those things, but what's going to be very helpful here is getting, is, is finding where your time is being spent. So I want to focus on the time, and obviously if there's any big sin, you know, if someone's like into pornography or something like that, you know, God forbid, you're wasting your time and that and like that's horrible. Get that figured out and straightened out immediately. Like that is that is really bad. Okay. And cuz I'm going to be bringing up things like social media, video games, things like that that aren't necessarily inherently sinful. But if you're wasting your time doing some really bad things, get that get that focus and get that out of your life. Amen. And and take the time of just saying I am going to eliminate this from my life. But I'm not going to focus on those things as much because I'm going to assume that nobody has those huge problems in their life. That's just for, for the purposes of this sermon. It doesn't mean I'm not going to preach about it in the future, but for the purpose of this sermon, we're going to assume everyone's doing good on, on some of those egregious areas. And let's focus on areas where you can just waste too much of your time because this will help you when you start doing godly things. It helps you in all areas because when you're walking in the spirit, you're not going to fulfill the lust of the flesh. So part of redeeming your time is not just going to be eliminating something that wastes your time, but replacing it with something that's good, replacing it with something that is, that is what you need to be doing, what you ought to be doing, what is going to be valuable for you to be doing with your time. And again, I'm, I, this is very open-ended. You can choose what that's going to be. But here's a real simple example of people who just, you know, are on their phones doing whatever, whether it be a game or social media or whatever, and their family is sitting across for them or at the dinner table or wherever. A real simple thing would just be if you can eliminate that even just spending time with your family is way more valuable. You will get some value out of that with your life than whatever you're doing on the, on the device or on the computer or on the game. Now, hopefully you can, you can be able to look at your, your schedule and at your time and say, well, what, how often am I doing these things? You start off by saying, where am I really spending my time? Think about your day-to-day -day routine. What do you do? How much time, because a lot of times when people do things that waste their time, you don't even realize how much time you're wasting until you start recording it, until you start thinking about it. And going back to the video game thing, you know, there was, as I started to grow more and, and get rid of a lot of time wasters in my life, there are games out there that only last like one minute. Right? And I don't know if this is right. I haven't played a game in a real long time, but like Bejeweled or things like that where you could play for one minute. And they're just real simple, stupid games, mindless games. You just play and, and you play like, well, it's just a minute. Well, then you play another one and another one and another one and another one. 
And before you know it, that one minute game lasted 30 minutes or an hour, right? And then you're just like, what did I really, did I really spend an hour doing that? Um, these are the types of things that I want you, you know, kind of looking at and focus on. Turn to, to Psalm chapter 39, Psalms 39. So the challenge we're going to be doing is identifying a time waster, okay? Sinful first, if it's something that's sinful, otherwise just something that, that can waste your time that really isn't that valuable, and then replacing it with something that is good. So a good way of doing this is think of, let's, let's, say, let's say you have something where you like, you like reading the news. Nothing wrong about reading the news. I read the news. Try to figure out how much time you spend doing that, right? If you're spending an hour reading the news and 15 minutes in your Bible, you've got a problem. And if you like reading, well, let's, let's replace, you know, let's, let's cut down the time I spend. Let, maybe, I, maybe I'll flip-flop that. How about I spend 15 minutes reading the news and an hour reading the Bible yeah, and, and, and get things actually using your time a lot more wisely, uh, look at Psalm 39 because a lot of the things we do ends up just being vanity. They're vain things. They're meaningless. And these are the areas that we want to reduce. And if you, get, if you get certain habits fixed in your life, you'll have more time. The Bible reading challenge, that takes time, right? When we're reading the entire New, the, the entire New Testament in, in 31 days. It, is, it requires your time to do that. Well, in order to have time to do that, you need to get rid of something else. You, you need to manage your time appropriately. The prayer challenge, it takes time. And our challenge literally takes at least 20 minutes every single day. Well, you have to make that time somewhere. You have to fit that into your schedule. Every challenge that we're going to do is going to require time. Everything that we do requires time. Serving God requires time. Coming to church, you have to take time out of your schedule to say, I'm going to church today. I'm not going to do these other things. I'm not going to just waste my time. Reading whatever that is, we need to make sure we have the time. Look at Psalm 39, verse number one. The Bible says, I said, I will take heed to my ways that I sin not with my tongue. I will keep my mouth with a bridle while the wicked is before me. I was dumb with silence. I held my peace even from good and my sorrow was stirred. My heart was hot within me while I was musing the fire burned. Then spake I with my tongue, Lord, make me to know mine end in the measure of my days, what it is, that I may know how frail I am. Behold, thou hast made my days as an handbreadth, and mine age is as nothing before thee. Verily, every man at his best estate is altogether vanity. Selah. Surely every man walketh in a vain show. Surely they are disquieted in vain. He heapeth up riches and knoweth not who shall gather them. And now, Lord, what wait I for? For my hope is in thee. Deliver me from all my transgressions. Make me not the reproach of the foolish. And again, within this passage here in Psalm 39, what we're seeing is this um, illustration of, of our lives. Like, what is it? What, what are my age? To God, it's like nothing. I mean, it's not that much time. And he says, you know, even the best, my, my, uh, every man at his best estate is altogether vanity. There's so many things that are done that are just useless and pointless and don't have eternal value. And one of the things that, that talks about here about people heaping up riches, and you know not who's going to gather them. You could heap up all these riches. Well, what's going to happen to those riches after you die? You don't even know what's going to happen. You can leave them to your children. What if your children are going to be foolish? You don't, you don't know what's going to happen to those things. And in the end, we know they're all going to burn up. Maybe you spend too much of your time working for physical goods and money. Maybe you say, man, I'm so busy. I don't know where I'm going to have the time to do this because I'm working. And you say, I need to work. And yes, you do need to work. And you do need to provide for your family. But don't get distracted with the riches of this world and thinking you need more than you really need. 
and let that consume all of your time. You say, you know what? I'm not really you know, involved in sin. I'm not wasting my time with, with video games and stuff. But even work can become a vain thing. Yes, men, we need to work in order to provide for ourselves and provide for our families, but you can get so consumed by work that you end up not having the time to do the things that really are important. When you live your whole life, if you, let's say you've worked really hard and you're putting in 80, 100 hours a week, every single week, man, I work hard. And because I'm working so hard, I'm not getting off and involved in all these other sins and I'm just trying to, to live a good life. Great, but at the end of your life, what are you going to actually say you've accomplished? You could be creating businesses, you could be creating jobs for other people, but what, where's the eternal value in all that? How many people did you, did you, you know, lead to Christ? How many people have you helped to, to get along in their life, to get sin out of their life, to, to help them become better? You know, that's what, those are the things that have the eternal value. The impact that you have on people serving the Lord is going to matter a lot more than how much money you've accumulated in this life. So maybe one of the things that we need to look at and look at for yourself is just, am I just spending way too much time making money? Turn to Ecclesiastes chapter 2. I'm super thankful just on, on my end with the job thing. The way that everything worked out for me, I've redeemed a lot of time because God's blessed me with something that's way closer to my house now. So now I, like, like I'm thrilled because with everything that I want to do, my goals, my plans, what I would like to see done in my life, time is valuable. I don't want to be wasting my time. And I definitely don't want to be wasting my time, you know, driving in a car to go and work. I have to work to support my family. There's no doubt about that. I'm not saying people don't have to work. But if I can make that time the most efficient as possible, spending that time doing, you know, as much time as I need to do that will be spent for that. But I don't want to do more because I want to spend my time doing other things and, and, trying to build more ministries and do more work and serve God better or do more soul winning or whatever, whatever I can do to do more on the things that really matter. Now, you still need to make the most efficient use of your time. So another way to redeem your time, let's say you have a longer commute or longer drive, use that time to do more than one thing. Don't just drive and do nothing or just listen to the radio, you can use that time to, how about meditate on God's word? Do a little bit of Bible memory. Uh, listen to the Bible. Get some audio Bible. Sing, even just singing hymns, you know, getting yourself in the spirit is going to be more valuable and a more valuable use of your time than just a total waste. When you really start looking at your life and really just, just take a, a a fine-tooth comb and start going through every area, you can, I, I'm guarantee you're going to be able to find places where you can do more. Try to get as much done as possible. Um, even just getting ready to, to do, just to go forward with your day in the morning. You can be praying while you take a shower, while you brush your teeth, while you, you know, every, every mundane task that these things need to be done, right? It's part of my schedule routine, but let's overlap some things together so that we can make the most use out of them. Yeah, be, you know, th those are some of the best times, I think, to do Bible memory when typically, you know, especially if you're getting up before other people in your family or whatever, it's kind of quiet in the house, you're going through your routine, you can do things without distraction because you don't even have to think about how to brush your teeth. You're not thinking like, okay, I need to make sure I'm getting, you know, like, you just do it. So your focus can be w way better spent on other things. There's so many mundane tasks that you do that don't require a lot of thinking. Uh, turn to Ecclesiastes. Did I already have you clear into Ecclesiastes 2? All right, good. Look down at verse number 1. The Bible says, I said in mine heart, go to now, I will prove thee with mirth. Therefore, enjoy pleasure. 
And behold, this also is vanity. We see, we're we're going to see here, we're going to go through different things that Solomon was using his time to do. And he's kind of feeling out all these different areas of life where you can spend your time doing things. And he keeps coming to the same conclusion about things being vain, being meaningless, that it's just vanity. He said, hey, I looked at what about having fun? I mean, just, just going out, having a good time. That's what mirth is, just pleasure. Let's go on vacation. Let's do these things. Yeah, it was fun, but overall, you still just kind of empty. It's like it's just vanity. It's still just meaningless. You can, you can do these things, but it's not, it, it's not really worth anything. Verse number two, I said of laughter, it is mad. And of mirth, what doeth it? Now, mad there doesn't mean angry. It's just, just kind of like crazy, whatever. You know, it's just, what's it good for? It's mad. Well, of mirth, what doeth it? Verse three, I sought in mine heart to give myself unto wine, yet acquainting mine heart with wisdom and to lay hold on folly till I might see what was that good for the sons of men, which they should do under the heaven all the days of their life. And, you know, he's explaining here, you see a lot of people, what's their life about? It's just drinking booze and having a party and having fun or whatever. He's like, I decided to check that out. Just see what, what good is that? And it's not good for anything. So he's, he's, he's explaining how I've done these things. Even work, verse number four, I made me great works. I built me houses. I planted me vineyards. Now, obviously, these are way, this is better than just getting drunk and right? just being, doing some real sinful things. But at the same time, verse five, he says, I made me gardens and orchards and I planted trees in them of all kinds of fruits. I made me pools of water to water therewith the wood that bringeth forth trees. I got me servants and maidens and had servants born in my house. Also, I had great possessions of great and small cattle above all that were in Jerusalem before me. So he's really aspired and made it to the top. Just in a business, he's, he's this great businessman, right? This is your Donald Trump. And I'm not going to get all details that it's history or whatever, but just think about someone who's, who's dedicated to just building things and, and building whatever and just, I made it to the top of my game. And in fact, I did such a good job that I was better than everyone that was before me. No one has done as good, as good of a job as I have done. This is what he's saying here with, with this stuff that he's decided to do. Verse number eight says, I gathered me also silver and gold and the peculiar treasure of kings and of the provinces. I got me men singers and women singers and the delights of the sons of men as musical instruments and that of all sorts. So I was great and increased more than all that were before me in Jerusalem. Also my wisdom remained with me and whatsoever mine eyes desired, I kept not from them. I withheld not my heart from any joy for my heart rejoiced in all my labor and this was my portion of all my labor. Then I looked on all the works that my hands had wrought and on the labor that I had labored to do. And behold, all was vanity and vexation of spirit and there was no profit under the sun. There's a lot of wisdom here. Because he's saying, I did the whole thing and it's worthless. See, we get distracted into thinking that there is something to this. I'm going to keep investing my time and I'm going to make it to the top. And once I finally get there, then I'll be complete. Then I'll be satisfied. Then I'll have really made it and done something with my life. If I, you know, when I make it to the top, when I achieve whatever it is you're looking to achieve, a lot of people don't even do it. And he's saying, you know what? I did it and I did it better than anyone else. And I'll tell you what, I look back and it was all meaningless. It's it, it's it was a vexation of spirit. He said, my spirit was still troubled. I didn't, I didn't feel like I really did that much. And it was the greatest things that had ever been done, right? The greatest works, the greatest buildings, the greatest gardens, what, the, the, the greatest prosperity, all the treasures that anyone could possibly want, I had them. And it, my spirit was still troubled. Don't get distracted into all of this stuff and waste your time going after things and treasures and buildings and works. You know, there's no profit. Right. The point 
is so that we can spend our time on things that are profitable, that have value that lasts forever. And you know what? Oftentimes that's going to mean you're not going to have all those things ever in this life. And you have to be able to allow yourself to say, that's okay. Free your heart from being set on the things of this world. And sometimes that can be a difficult thing to do because you see other people have things. But you know what that's called? It's being covetous yeah. and right. wanting those things. Get your heart right to want the right things and say, I don't care how big my house is. I don't care how much comforts I have. If you can have things, great, whatever. But don't let that be your focus at all. I mean, whatever you have, you have. Whatever, whatever state you're in, therewith be content. Yeah, I'm fine with all that. Whether I have a lot, whether, whether I abound or whether I'm abased. Right. The Apostle Paul said, I could be in, in great riches and have a lot or I could have nothing. Right. Right. And it doesn't matter because what I'm just focused on is doing the right thing, doing things of eternal value. And it, the, in the meantime, however long my, my vapor lasts, if, it, if it's over here or over there, it doesn't matter because I want that vapor time spent accumulating riches in heaven that will last forever. And in order to do that, and we, we want to we maximize our time here on this earth and, and make sure we're not just wasting it. Too many people think they can't serve God that much because they don't have the time. As I mentioned before, we all have the same amount of time. We all have the same amount of time. So if you see someone else serving the Lord and doing a lot for God, oh, well, he's got time for that. Well, we all have the same amount of time. That's right. it's, it's based on how you choose to spend your time. Oftentimes, you'll... you'll you know, you hear of people doing great things, but you don't really know their day-to-day -day life. And if you got to know the day-to-day -day life, you'd understand why they're able to do so much. Because they make sacrifices and, and they don't spend their time just doing frivolous things and just time wasters. And, and they look at their schedule and make it the most efficient that they can. Everybody can do great things. That's why I like looking to people that are accomplishing a lot because when you, when you have a good example of someone doing a lot of work and just producing a lot of things and just living for the Lord, and they're ultimately no different from you. They're a person. They're a man. That's, you know, the Bible explains in James, too, that, in James as well, that um, you know, Elijah was a like man. He, was in the, he, he had a fleshly body. He, he lived in this world like anyone else, yet he had power with God, yet he was able to pray and these things happened. Why? Because he dedicated his life to doing those things and he made you know, certain things important, serving God, and he was able to get the power of God in his life by yielding himself to God, fervently praying and doing the things that other people say, I don't have the time for that. Yeah. He chose to make the time for those things. Anybody can do it. Anybody can can do those things. You can do as much as you want. And when you see other people doing things, you can at least do that much. Let's finish off this chapter here. It says in uh, verse 12, And I turned myself to behold wisdom and madness and folly, for what can the man do that cometh after the king, even that which hath been already done? Then I saw that wisdom excelleth folly as far as light excelleth darkness. The wise man's eyes are in his head, but the fool walketh in darkness. And I perceived myself perceived also that one event happeneth to them all. I mean, basically, we're all going to die. But, um, you know, wisdom far excels folly. And he's going into all these things that are just folly. Let's be wise with our time. Let's redeem our time. So just to, just to close... The challenge for March 
It's going to be start, start now by identifying one area of your life where I need to get rid of this. And find something that you're going to get rid of that you're not going to go back to at the end of the month. Things that you just cut out. And if you don't cut them out completely, say, I'm limiting myself. Right? That there is a time constraint on this because I don't want to waste my time. I think in general, if something is giving you a problem and you have a tendency to spend more time doing things, it's best just not to do it at all because it's really easy to put a time limit on and then kind of go right back to where you were before. But just be diligent. Decide for yourself what it is that you're going to change, what it is that you're going to do that's going to get you more time. If it's 10 minutes a day, that's valuable. That adds up. 10 minutes a day, so over an hour a week. Over an hour a week, that's over 365 hours a year. I mean, just it, it all adds up. Sure. And our life is an accumulation of all of this time. So if you gain yourself even a little bit of time and can turn, use that time wisely on things that are going to be valuable, things that are going to be good, over the span of your life, however many years that is, that will have a dramatic impact. Th think about it this way, because this is a worldly way of thinking about it. When, when people think about a retirement plan, you've probably all heard, you know, when you start young, you can put a little bit away. And the nature of just putting a little bit away every paycheck for your, you know, your whole, if you live to be a, like a retirement age, you accumulate so much more money than if you start way later in life. What I'm saying, and, and the more that you can put in, the more that, that uh, multiplies, right? Think about that with your time. The more time you can invest, and early on, you start from a younger age investing your time wisely doing things that uh, have value in God's eyes. Even just a little bit more as you grow and continue in your life, that little bit that you've decided today, starting this month or whatever, I'm going to start doing things different with my life will multiply tremendously over the course of your entire life if you can just keep these things as habits for yourself and, and keep tabs on your time. You will have accomplished so much more even in that little bit that you gain. You can say, well, it's not that much because you're looking at it on a really small scale of just today, of just one day. No, you see the big picture. Wow, I've spent that much time. It, 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 you know, unfortunately, we live in a world of instant gratification. People just want to have everything right now. But that's not the way the right things and the good things work and, and the way that God has things work. The way the, way the Bible teaches is that you're, you're sowing seeds and you reap of those things later. Sow the seeds of, of using your time wisely so that later on you'll benefit and be able to reap from you redeeming that time. Let's bow our eyes have a word of prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for um, all the instruction that we can receive from your word. Lord, I pray that you please help us to really take a, a, a good look into our daily routines, into our lives, and see where it is that we can just make better use of our time and that we could... Um, redeem that time use it wisely to serve you to do things that are that are going to be much more valuable than however they're being s spent currently lord um, all of us can can look at our lives and and do things different and change things up so that we can um, still do the things that are that are needful or necessary in this life like eating and drinking and sleeping but then also be able to do more to serve you lord help us to be wise and identify these things and to just not waste the time that you have given it however much time we have lord help us not to waste it here on this earth in jesus name we pray amen